Good morning, fellow privateers. Welcome to the week ahead outlook from your friends at Privateer FX. I'm going to keep this one brief, um, traveling a bit today, so I don't have a, a ton of time. Um, but there are some interesting charts we'll, we'll take a look at. Um, we will also take a look at the event risk ad. So there, there is actually quite a bit of economic data um, coming out this week. Uh, we get the, probably the top focus would be on the RBMZ, which I believe the odds of a cut probably has moved down from about 75% down to 65%. Um, so that's uh, that'll be on Tuesday, my time. Um, we also have uh, a bunch of CPIs coming out, Norway, Sweden, UK, US. We got uh, third quarter GDPs out of the UK, Norway, Germany, Japan, Europe, and uh, retail sales out of the US on Friday. So, you know, decent amount of event risk. Um, as far as news out over the weekend, you know, Trump said that they haven't decided on um, taking, you know, reducing the tariffs or, so, you know, that's still a, a very um, headline driven, you know, it, it does look like they're going to sign something this phase one, um, you know, in the next couple of weeks. But what we don't know is if they're going to roll back these the tariffs that are already in place. So that will be a head, headline game. And it's interesting how the equities held up pretty well and bond yields soared um, on Friday, even after the headline. Um, and, and then I think Navarro was out this weekend, um, you know, the hawkish trade rep. Um, but equities held up pretty well. Uh, so I'll be curious to see how they open in about an hour and 10 minutes. Um, doing this just before, yeah, about an hour or so ahead before the. Um, the equity index features start trading. Um, what else do we have? So that, that pretty much covers the event risk. Um, what else do we have? Duration solve. I was reading this, um, I believe it's out of one of our bank contacts. Uh, I guess the seasonals, um, the duration seasonals may have helped to exasperate some of this move. Um, and that's something, you know, there was a huge, obviously a huge move in these 10 year yields lower. Uh, you remember when the, the tariff war started heating up in, uh, at the end of July, I believe it was August 1st that Trump made that announcement, uh, increasing tariffs. And you see the big the big move down. So it all kind of started. We we closed that week right around here um, at 210, and you know we got down to one uh, 145, I believe it was. Um, what was that? Low? Hold on a sec. Yeah, 142 was the low. Then we had the big the big pop. In early September, and then we kind of went back down. You know, made a new, uh, another low, but a, a higher low than the August lows. And I highlighted here, and I put this on Twitter earlier. Um, this is an important close right here. This goes back to the June 24th week ending, and uh, you know, once we broke through that and closed through it. That's when we really get going. We got, you know, 50, 60, 70 basis points knocked off on the 10 year, US 10 year. So we closed uh, just below two. The high this week, last week was 197, I believe. Yeah, 197. Um, we've been talking about this now for the past week or so that, you know, this kind of two to 210, 216, I think is. One, uh, one of our friends targets. I do think we're going to get up there. We're going to go see that. And I think it'd be probably a pretty good place to uh, start getting long some 10-year futures again. 
So anyhow, we, you know, we were stressing kind of all week that this is one of the more important charts out there. Uh, if you take a look at the daily, just to get an idea of, you know, how things reacted. I mean, that's from the November 1st low and, you know, we had kind of one down bar straight up. That was a big, big belt up bar. And that was on the, uh, on Thursday and, uh, was that Thursday? Yeah, and the eighth was Friday. The spar looks kind of strange. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, but anyhow, so keep an eye on two percent, and above there is two ten to two fifteen. Uh, Thirty year, you know, I don't really have to look at it. It's the same type of chart. Um, here's a daily close. Stop here at 242 on Friday, and you know that is above those those old. So we're you know we're taking the yields, we're taking out these September highs, and the equivalent of that the tenure was 190. So once we got about 190, you know things really started moving, and a lot of it is uh, positioning. The CTA community, um, you know, has been basically long bonds. Um, you know, globally, kind of all year, it's been a great trend. They've never turned, you know, really good returns and fixed income. And um, now they are in the process of flipping from max long to short, um, not max short. And, you know, we'll update that once we see the, the latest CTA data. But I believe that if we go, if we start getting about 210, Think that they will then have to be 100% short um, futures. So uh, this has been a painful. This was a painful last week for them. Uh, you know, highly, very highly correlated to the bonds uh, is, has been gold. Gold has been just goofing around sideways. You know, for a while. <clears throat> you know, kind of all the way back. You know, once we kind of broke 1480, and then it just kind of you know, drifted around between 1460 and 1550. And we finally broke down last week. Um, fortunately, I didn't play this one too well, but it, it was a good break. Um, it, it ended up working. You can see here's a weekly chart. We're now um, kind of back into this, this green zone, which I was saying was going to be support. Um, but if, if yields continue higher globally, this is going to keep pressure on gold. Silver, uh, our friend Greg McKenna mentioned it, how it was looking Bitcoin-y to him, and uh, he's been saying that for the past couple of weeks. And sure enough, you know, you had this blow off top, big down, big move down, messed around for a few weeks, and then just got totally destroyed. And, um, you know, we're back into these old weekly highs right here about 1665 area which should be some short-term support uh platinum smoked last week we were on the wrong side of that i had some platinum longs on and that did not work out so well but uh copper 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 does well with risk um see on the week um uh, I don't have it up here, but the, it touched the 200-day moving average pretty much to the tick, which came in right around 273. I believe the high on Thursday was 272.70, and then it pulled back. So, you know, back to the weekly chart, we had, um, yeah, we actually you know, pulled back down to 268, so kind of middle of the week. We're, we're still like that higher as long as risk hangs in there. Um, Speaking of risk, let's take a look at the S&P, NASDAQ, and I've got some really old uh, Fibonacci's in here, which we're going to get rid of. Apologize. I just haven't had time today to, to really clean it up. Um, you know, a new, a new, another new weekly high week, all time high weekly close, which we've now seen one, you know, the past couple weeks. Um, and Assuming the trade news does not turn negative, um, you know, I don't see why this can't keep grinding higher, although I do feel like it's starting to lose a bit of momentum. Um, 
and if we look at the daily, here's a nice doji. Um, we're going to get some DeMarc, more DeMarc signals on the dailies coming up in the next few days. And uh, we've actually, we actually bought some, I'm going to show you the VIX chart. The VIX, I was reading over the weekend, um, the VIX uh, positioning is now at, uh, it's a record short for VIX. Um, I don't have the chart handy, but, uh, you know, that, that is one negative trade headline away from, you know, the VIX could go from uh, 12 where it is now, um, you know, it could be up above 20 in a heartbeat. That's how the VIX moves. So we've actually bought some VIX calls, uh, just kind of to hedge some of our fixed income short positions, um, you know, for about, you know, we're, I think they're two week in one month. Um, we've got some 20 calls in the VIX. Um, you know, here again, here's the S&P. I guess short term, you know, if this thing does decides that it wants to kind of roll over, um, I'd be using 3065. It looks like a that low there. Um, if we break that, there'll probably be some short-term stops. Maybe get down to 3030 area, 3030, 35, uh, 3540. Um, here's a VIX chart. So you can see we've made a new. That's the daily. Let's look at the weekly. Uh, the lowest weekly close. You know, even I guess we look back about a year was 1160 and the lowest weekly close in 2019 was about 1230 and we closed at 1210 on Friday. So a new low weekly close for 2019 and record short positioning. What could possibly go wrong? Dollar yen, kind of really haven't been on this one at all. Um, just following risk. Sterling, it's been sideways now. We got that green nine up here a few weeks ago, and it's just been kind of sideways to lower, which is what it's supposed to do when it hits these inflection points. Um, nothing really new on that front uh, over the weekend. Euro dollar is back below the trend line that it broke and closed above two out of the last four weeks. And now we're right back below and, you know, not too far from the year's lows. Kind of got that one wrong. We were in the dollar bear camp. Uh, we thought we were on the precipice of something bigger for the dollar, uh, a much, you know, lower move. And uh, I think we were early. So we're out of that for now. Um, Aussie dollar. Reversal lower week-ish now, inside week, nothing, nothing to report there. Uh, just in a range, 69 to 67, call it on the wide, um, until we break out at either side of that. Uh, not really too interested. Um, so again, uh, I'm going I'm to cut this one a little bit short. Uh, keep an eye on that RBMZ coming up this week. That's important um, as the odds have dropped a bit for a cut in the past couple of weeks. And what else do we have? Yeah, uh, that's kind of a highlight. The, the retail sales, I think, is extremely important. Any consumer, any, any indicator that is measuring the health of the U.S. consumer, especially as we are getting closer to the holidays, um, is, is important. And uh, but that number's not till Friday. So I suspect we'll have lots of Brexit BS and uh, trade headlines, you know, every day from Trump and Navarro and China. And, um, you know, so keep, keep your powder dry, stay nimble. And you'll hear from us on the European Open. And we'll tweet you throughout the week if anything uh, of interest pops up on our screens. All right. Have a great week ahead and we'll speak to you on the open. Cheers.